This is the hardware setup screen of the software. First option in here is printers option, where you will be uh, choosing what printer you will be using in order to print receipts or invoices. First uh, choice in here is receipt printer. That refers to those small format printers that uh, print on a paper roll. There is paper of about uh, three inches width or so. Second uh, choice is invoice form printer. That is referring to uh, the regular printers we're all used to for office work and for home work. Those are the eight and a half uh, by 11 inches size papers or internationally known as the A4 format printers. And the last choice is uh, not to use a printer uh, and not to uh, print receipts or invoices, to turn off printing for receipts or invoices. Um, the interesting question we get in here is uh, if there is an option in the software to actually not print uh, invoices or receipts, but then again, when the user of the software changes their mind for a certain uh, circumstance, they tender out an, an, a, a sale and they change their mind, they want to uh, print a receipt for this particular sale only once in a while. Uh, is there such an option? And yes, uh, you would still select no printer, uh, so to turn off printing on a regular basis. And when that sale happens that you would like to print out a receipt on the fly for, then uh, you just use this uh, option on the main screen that says uh, print last invoice. That's uh, with the F, uh, F3 function key. And it's going to print invoices on the fly even though you have uh, turned off the printing option in here. The next uh, option is barcode format. This is useful if you're using a barcode scanner. In order to uh, improve the performance of that barcode scanner, uh, it's uh, good for our software to know ahead of time what is the common length of uh, the maximum length of the barcodes that you will be scanning. And uh, you know, you need to know that different industries have different standards, but mostly barcodes are uh, 12 characters long or 12 digits. Of course, different industries, as I said, have different standards like uh, ISBN numbers for books have 13 digits. I don't know, cell phone industry has its own for uh, cell phone serial numbers, if you have a cell phone store or, store or something like that. So uh, you just enter that maximum amount of characters that your barcode will be scanning and you'll be improving your barcode performance greatly with that. The next option is to select uh, printers for each printing task. Of course, you can have the same printer used for all of the printing tasks, or you can select different ones if you have different uh, printers in your business that you want to use for different tasks. So the first uh, choice is to select a receipt or invoice printer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select a real receipt printer, one of those um, that print on paper rolls. Uh, then the second uh, choice you need to make is for a reports printer, which printer you'll be using to print out reports. We'll go ahead and use HP LaserJet, a standard format, you know, eight and a half by 11 inches paper printer. And the third one is a barcodes printer. In case we print barcodes with the software, uh, we're going to use the same printer as for our reports. The next option is cash drawer and receipt printer settings. Um, this is basically to tell the software if you have a cash drawer or not, and if you want our software to control that cash drawer, meaning to open it when needed. Uh, if you don't have a cash drawer, of course, you will select this first option that says no cash drawer. If you do have a cash drawer, we'll select use a cash drawer. And we need to tell the software what printer that cash drawer is connected to. Of course, the cash drawer connects with a cable to the printer, to the receipt printer, because the receipt printers are special in the way that they uh, drive the cash drawers, they uh, control the cash drawers, they're the ones actually opening the cash drawers, sending a signal to them. And uh, you need to tell our software which printer will be driving your cash drawer, which printer the cash drawer is connected to. We're going to select our uh, receipt printer in here. And the last thing you need to do is to enter the decimal code or hexadecimal code uh, that that particular printer of yours, receipt printer, uses to actually open that uh, the cash drawers. So uh, you need to look into your printer's technical manual, or if you can't find it there, then just contact the printer's technical support. 
uh, of the manufacturer of that printer and ask them for the decimal code of that printer that the printer uses for opening cash drawers. I'm going to go ahead and enter the decimal code for this citizen receipt printer that we have in here. And that's it. Next option is poll display settings. If you're going to use a poll display in your business, uh, of course, it needs to be connected to your PC. The drivers for it need to be installed. And uh, as far as our software is concerned, all you need to do is do two settings in here. First, tell our software which port the poll display is connected to. It will usually be COM1, COM2, 3, or 4, any of those uh, serial COM ports. Or in some instances, uh, it may be a USB. Uh, port that's emulating a COM port and you'll just select it in here from the drop down menu right now on this uh, PC we don't have any pull displays connected to it so it's not giving us nothing um, and the second option is you have to tell our s software what is the maximum amount of characters it can write per line on that pull display port usually that uh, is about 20 characters it's kind of like a standard we've seen uh, pole displays they can do more or less so that's where you enter that value and the last option in this menu is uh, weight scale settings if you choose to use a weight scale in your business to weigh things as you sell then you need to of course connect that weight scale to the to your PC to the proper port and uh, install the drivers for it now uh, in our software all you need to do is select the port that the weight scale is connected to and this is going to be one of the serial COM ports, COM1, 2, 3, or 4 port, and you'll simply select it in here. Once you're done uh, with all of your selections for this menu, all you need to do is click Submit Changes for the changes to be saved into the database. Then you'll see this window that says that the changes were updated successfully and that the software will simply need to restart in order for the changes to take effect. So as soon as you click OK in here, the software will simply restart itself.